Ah, good afternoon, everybody. The second quarter final of the 1979 Cricket World Cup was played today. It was between Sri Lanka versus New Zealand. The winners would play England in the first semi final. It was played at Colombo, and this is what happened in today's important match. Um, let's see the final outcome. Um, a little bit blurry, let's just sort that out. Yeah, that's fine now. Um, incredibly, New Zealand won the toss and elected to bowl first on a dry, hard pitch here at Colombo. Um, he felt, um, Mike Burgess felt that his bowlers could get control and he thought the pitch wouldn't change that much if the game went on. The Sri Lankan captain, um, Aruna Tekun, actually said that he was, would have been happy batting first and that New Zealand produced an absolute magnificent performance in the field and the ball. Um, Vendula Wallapula 7 16 for um, Sunil Wetwemi a second 50 in a row for Aruna Tekun um, but then once he got out it just all went to pieces really they lost their last 8 wickets for just 78 runs Sri Lanka 38 for Roy Diaz Dilip Mendes 14 1 for them Shurachandra De Silva um, 7 for them the wicket keeper um, Sunil Jai Singer, one for um, Sadaf Pascal, 16 not out from um, Tony Opafu. He's had a wonderful tournament, um, real hearted cricketer. 10 for um, Stanley De Silva and one for um, Ajit De Silva. 186 all out in just 47.1 overs. The bowling figures, they all bowled superbly. 3 for 49 for the medium pacer. Um, Warren Stott in only his second game of the tournament. Two for 29 for um, returning Gary Troop. Two for 24 for Brian McKechnie. One for 44 for Lance Gerns. And one for 24 for um, Richard Hadley, who bowled absolutely fantastically and probably should have got more. In the end, the run chase for New Zealand was absolutely sensational, really. Um, John Wright went for 20, but... That man, again, he's actually got 83 of 112 deliveries in a man of a match performance from Glenn Turner and 70 of just 77 deliveries for Glenn Howarth. Um, they put on, for the second wicket, 137. They won 187 for one in just 38.1 overs. The run chase. Um, Glenn Turner's actually got 262 runs at an average of 53 this World Cup. Not bad for someone who's allegedly out of form in this tournament and hasn't been opening the batting for New Zealand. He loves quarterfinals. He's unbeaten now. He managed 116 against India four years ago and he's managed 83 not out here. And he's yet to be dismissed in, in the quarterfinals. So I'm just trying to add up the figures. 100... 109, that's 199 runs in two quarter-final matches without being dismissed. 30 for one for um, Bendula Wadopolo, he was the only bowler to get a wicket. They all got absolutely hammered. Um, Shoma Chandra de Silva, 42 for naught, 18 for naught for um, Sadaf Pascal. 31 for naught for Tony Opatha, off just five overs. 18 for naught for Stanley de Silva, bowled well for eight overs. And 39 for naught off ten overs for Ajit de Silva. So, as you can see there, um, the outcome was Sri Lanka versus New Zealand in the second quarter final. Um, New Zealand won the toss, selected the bowl first on a hard dry pitch. They bowled fantastically to bowl Sri Lanka out for just 186, and they chased runs down emphatically. 187 for one in just 38.1 overs. New Zealand won by nine wickets, and another man of the match award for Glenn Turner. 83, of 112, 83 not out of 112 deliveries. Um, amazingly, he won't put as the star player, and Bruce Edgar didn't even play today. I don't think Bruce Edgar will be getting back into the side, um, even though Glenn, even though Mike Burgess said he will play against England. This is what it means for the World Cup. Tomorrow's matches are Pakistan versus Australia. Australia not in great form. Pakistan probably still smart enough for that dramatic defeat against England, but look at that. New Zealand win. It's England versus New Zealand in the first semi-final of this World Cup here in Sri Lanka. Pakistan versus Australia tomorrow. 
Um, let's have a look at the um, statistics. Um, Sri Lanka's World Cup is over. Um, let's have a look at the star players and see how they've done um, this tournament. No Bruce Edgar today, so um, his average won't have improved. But um, let's have a look at the final outcome there. Sean Machado and Silva, 11 wickets in 6 matches, average of 22, 12 of a bat. Um, he's had a pretty good tournament. He, he can hold his head up high, um, along with Tony Opafa. They've been real star players this tournament. As for um, Dulit Mendes, 279 runs at an average of 46. He's had a pretty solid tournament. I don't know whether those, that 14 runs has actually made him the leading run score in the tournament. Oh, it has. So Dulit Mendes is the leading run scorer in this tournament. He's hit three fifties in this World Cup. Um, and he can definitely hold his head up high with that performance. Um, two more wickets for um, Brian McKechnie. Eight wickets in six matches. Not really been unbelievable, but his bowling average has now gone below 20 now. 19 with a ball. And obviously Bruce Edgar didn't play. But look at that average from Bruce Edgar. Um, it's just amazing that um, the pundits decided to put him instead of the player of the tournament four years ago. He's got 265 runs in. But sorry, I just want to double check something. He's got 265 runs in the tournament, so he's only 14 behind Dulit Mendes as the leading, to become the leading run scorer. I mean, he hasn't, he's allegedly not been informed, Glenn Turner. But what a player he is. He is, without doubt, the best batsman that New Zealand have ever produced, in my eyes, anyway. Um, you know, he's really held the team together and he's having another fantastic tournament. He probably ain't going to win player of the tournament. I think player of the tournament is probably going to go to one of the bowlers. Tomorrow's match, Pakistan versus Australia. Pakistan looking for to knock Australia out of the World Cup and gain revenge for their quarter-final defeat four years ago. Australia haven't been informed in this tournament, but Pakistan have lost two very cl close and dramatic matches against England and Sri Lanka. So it all depends which Pakistan side turn up tomorrow. But until then, this is me, Donald Taylor, reporting on the 1979 World Cup being played here in Sri Lanka on Brian Lowe Cricket and PlayStation. Oh, yeah, another thing... Um, it was announced yesterday, we were talking about, before I leave, um, we were talking about, there was a delayment, there was a delayed announcement on the host of the 1983 World Cup. There's reports that New Zealand weren't going to get it due to financial problems. Well, New Zealand, it was announced last night that New Zealand are going to be the hosts of the third Cricket World Cup in 1983. They've, um, part, the ICC said they're happy with the bid and believe that New Zealand will host a great World Cup. So once again, Sri Lanka, it's been quite weird. The day in which they were announced as a test player nation, they played England and lost by six wickets. And today, New Zealand have been announced as the host of the, night of the next World Cup in four years' time in 1983. And they've absolutely thrashed Sri Lanka. So, yeah, you just wonder about the ICC's announcement. And maybe they need to make an announcement for the next host nation in 1987 before... The 1983 World Cup actually begins. But um, until then, this is me, Lawrence Howard, reporting on this World Cup in Sri Lanka. See you tomorrow for Australia versus Pakistan, or Pakistan versus Australia. Until then, bye bye.